everybody. Looks like we're working today. I hope that the time change things have been uh, figured out. I apologize that I failed to mention that the U.S. went on daylight savings time. I had trouble in all of my online stuff with people not lining up with the right time. So hopefully we're all sort of back on track as times shift all over the world in the spring. I'm glad you're all here from all over. Um, Hawaii and the UK and Germany and Texas and Scotland and Florida and Colorado. Hello, Colorado. It's supposed to be 70 degrees here on Friday. Pretty excited. Um, Edinburgh. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Nan from New York. Idaho. Hi, Carol. Glad you're all here. Um, I'm going to assume you can hear me. I have a little technology shuffle going on today. So I think so far we're good, right? Uh, you'll tell me if not. If things completely crash, I'll be back in a minute. So um, I don't think they will, though. Good morning from Vermont and Michigan and Colorado and Northern Colorado, uh, Northern California. Hi, Kate. Um, hi, Julie in the UK and even Spain. Um, yes, we all hope we're heading towards a safer world. That is, um, I think we are heading towards a safer world. It's just that uh, today or this past week was a whole year since I started doing Change the Shed, which, whoo, a whole year. Um, I had no, of course, no clue that <clears throat> we would be here a year later. So uh, here we are. And... Um, yeah, kind of unexpected. So um, we're still weaving and we have hope because there is science and let's hope that uh, eventually we come out of this. Col Fort Collins is a big like summer, spring, summer, fall, outdoor venue, um, music, beer kind of festival place. And so our town has been actually a lot of Colorado's like that our town has been a little I saw it described today as the year of the asterisk so um it's that you know well we don't know if it's going to happen here's an asterisk I feel like that's a good description for the upcoming the rest of 2021 we'll just put an asterisk on everyone on everything we'll see what happens um so hello everyone from Oregon and New York and uh, Paula from the UK and Bainbridge and I bet it's beautiful there. Um, another Carol and Barbara from Washington State, New York City. Hi, Vicki. Um, Eastern Washington, another beautiful place. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Um, finally made it live. I'm allegedly in a meeting in New Jersey. I love it. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, because it's on YouTube, you can still run a Zoom on another screen, right? So no one will know. Um, that's great. Uh, I fully support multitasking, uh, although I don't listen well when I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm still working on the hand basket. Not a year later. A year ago, I was not working on this piece. However, I did think it would be finished in 2020. <clears throat> uh, so let me just show you where I am. So I had hoped this would be done by today so that on the anniversary of our one year Change the Shed, I would be able to say, hey, it's done. But here we are. Uh, let's see if I can make this a little smaller. Um, here we are. I did actually change the cartoon a little bit. I'm kind of excited about it. Let's see if I can bring this up. Um, so in 2020, of course, uh, 2020 was uh, not an easy year, as we all know. Um, but then we moved into 2021, and originally this piece had a little, had the date on here, and it said 2020. And uh, this, the flames were going to go all the way around the um, edge of this. This is where the edge of the piece is, the top of it. And I decided that since we were in 2021 and we had hope, 
I was going to um, add, make this top corner blue like the sky. Um, yeah, it's a fairly, a fairly good sky blue. I'm actually going to have three values of this, but, and then I think I'm going to add the butterfly. I don't know if you remember. Um, sorry about my body in the way there. Um, in this, this was maybe the first piece I did on Change the Shed. I don't know. Um, it goes this way. This is the hot flash piece, and it had this little guy, butterfly guy in there, and I thought, oh, I could add a butterfly, too. Sort of like the hot flash, you know, hope for uh, perimenopause. We could have hope for um, 2022. So I'm going to maybe add the butterfly, and I'm going to change that corner to being blue. I don't usually change a, t um, a design once I've started something, but... In this case, I think I am going to because I feel like we need hope and, um, yeah, we need hope. The year of the asterisk and the year of being on mute. <laughs> the year of you're on mute. I don't know if that's a Zoom comment or um, it just feels that way, but it feels like it's been a year of very fuzziness. Um, oh, good. There's other people I'm luring away from their jobs to um, watch Change the Shed while they're working. I love it. Hi, Summer. <laughs> um, okay, so um, let's look at this uh, crazy little thing. I am doing, if you haven't seen this before, I'm doing the two set thing. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit here and work on Right now I'm working on this basket, which is upside down, and I, you might have seen I posted some pictures to Instagram um, of deciding on the center color what I was going to do for um, the middle, the in, so this is inside the basket, and then this line will be outside again, and um, these were just little finger skeins. I like to use those to look at the colors of things, and so, um, yeah, I Oh, there we go. Okay. My monitor was making me feel like it was super, super dark and you were never going to see this. Turns out I needed to turn up the brightness on my monitor. So hopefully you can see um, what's going on. Okay. So I just realized I need an outline here. I'm outlining um, each of these shapes just to make them a little clearer and to reinforce that cartoony aspect of this piece. I did do an outline here, but it was a brown that blended in. I didn't want it to be quite as dark. So we'll see what happens here. I've been using this super dark brown for the outlines, and I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I love you guys who are working and watching Change the Shed. You got your priorities straight. That's awesome. Just blame it on me if you're boss wants to know why you were talking about weaving on your work meeting. Okay. So this has this uh, loom. Let's see if I zoom out again. Yeah, you can see it has two the two shedding devices on it. And um, the top one is for eight ends per inch and the bottom one is for 16. And that has been working fairly well. It's not perfect. Um, the top, the bottom shedding device gets in the way of the top one. So it is not um, ideal, but it does help, especially with the 16. Uh, weaving at 16 EPI turns out is really not, it's okay, but I wouldn't want to do a piece this big at 16 EPI, the whole thing. It's pretty fierce. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to outline to there. And there are places where I've done the eccentric outline, um, eccentric outline, whichever you want to say. Uh, those of you who have been with me a while know I have this weird way of saying eccentric, eccentric. It's actually eccentric. It's the same word. It's just that I was trained as an occupational therapist, and in my training we were taught to say or maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. I picked it up as an OT, not as a weaver. So I doubt you'll ever hear another tapestry artist say eccentric. Eccentric is fine. 
Okay, so this outline is blending right into this mix. It's almost identical to one of the colors in the mix. And here I have this little guy's, um, or this uh, figure's pant leg upside down going into the basket, and I want to make sure that that actually happens, that it actually looks right. Okay. And do I want that to go there? I don't think I do. Can you see this? Okay. Always with eccentric weaving, it's that, mm, did you leave enough left in there, but not too much? There's definitely moments I wish that I was doing this on a regular pipe loom so that I could just go around to the back and weave parts from the back. But here we are. Okay, so now I have an outline in there and I can fill in with this, um, is the lighter color of the sort of outside of the basket. All right. Let's see if my instinct here was right. My debate was whether to cover this particular warp with the dark or the light, and I think that the light is the answer. Stay in the light. Okay. Oh, yep, and now I have a shedding problem. Can you see right there? Let's see if I can make it closer. So, oh, here, this will help. So right here, I want to wrap this warp and I have a shedding problem because it will be in the same shed as that outline. So here's my biggest cheat ever. It's called um, many things. Sometimes it's just called shifting the shed. Um, I'm actually gonna go back to this other shed and I have one strand of that outline color stick that in there it shifts the shed so that I won't have lice I'm gonna back that out a little bit okay now when I go back here hang on oh am I totally wrong I'm gonna be so embarrassed oh my god well you saw how I how I uh, shift the shed, except that it was totally already in the right shed, I think. Let's see, this will tell us. Yep, it was fine. So that's how you shift the shed sometimes when it's wrong, but it wasn't wrong. And sometimes it takes trial and error, at least for me to get it right, even still, after all these years. But you can do that. You can use one strand from your bundle to shift the shed. You could use a full strand also. That would also work. It's called um, Crapo in my classes, uh, C-R-A-U-P, C-R-A-P-A-U-D maybe. It's a French word. Um, Yeah, that's going to work all right. And there's always, always when making curves, there's this little niggling, the constant question of where do I need to step this over to make this curve look right? Fortunately, this is a basket, so it should be a little bit bumpy. And I am going to put an outline around that, which I know I'm going to do so doesn't have to be completely perfect. But there are considerations every time you do this, as in 
Is it a Hiller Valley thread? Does it matter? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mm, might have been nice to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make that outline a little bit thicker, but we'll see how it looks. The toad thing, yes. Yes, um, Cropo, the toad thing. I really should learn more French, to be honest. Someone here who speaks French will know. Does Cropo mean little frog? And probably I'm not even saying it right. I do spend a fair amount of time on uh, Google looking at how to pronounce words in other languages, but I still don't always get them right. <laughs> Probably get them wrong more than right. At least in other languages I've never spoken. Well, the outside curve's looking good. <laughs> I don't know so much about the inside curve, but How's that focus doing? Always with the focus. If I wasn't doing this live, I probably would just pick this. Um, I would do it like this. It, um, because there's only a few warps, but I was hoping you would be able to see it better if I use the shedding device. Maybe that's not true. Um, this is how I would be doing this with just a few warps. Let's go here. just because it takes less time than putting down your tools. This is how people who use tapestry bobbins on upright limbs without shedding also would weave. Kind of cutting off the corner of this little dude. Let's see if that'll stay. Oh, I'm having a little internet lag. Sorry, y'all. Maybe that's part of the focus thing. Um, oh, <laughs> went back to that shedding device, didn't I? It feels awkward to, I'm sort of tilted, my body's tilted, and it's hard to pick the shed with my left hand with the loom tilted. I would normally not be weaving with it at this angle. Summer was saying that it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing on a large um, monitor. And uh, I shouldn't admit this, but because I've been working online for exclusively for seven years now, I just got a large monitor last year. And it's, it's like, it's an amazing change. I can't believe I worked for seven years entirely on a laptop. My uh, peanut gallery, I, I'm sure right now, is saying, I told you. It's so much easier to edit video when you have a big monitor versus a laptop.
So I hope you all have been getting some weaving in here and there. Okay. So I'm obviously running out of this color, which is the same as this color. And my little head is spinning about, okay, how am I going to do? This is a, let me move this so I can see my cartoon a minute. This is a handle coming around and it meets what's the inside here. Probably, I should have brought that dark outline all the way around there is what I should have done. So I'm going to add an outline there and then I'm going to just let these two meet because I think that form all goes into itself. So I'll need to get some more of this color. That's my plan. I think this is the right. Sometimes I have little pieces of yarn floating around and it's hard to see what, what color it is. Let's see, how much do I need? I don't need much. It's that constant fight between running out of yarn and conserving, not wasting a lot of it. <laughs> That's funny. Suzanne says, my dad used to say he was only wrong once in his life. Um, that was when he thought he was wrong, but it turned out he'd been right in the first place. <laughs> oh, I've been wrong a lot in my life. I will not not say that, but it is nice when you uh, think you're wrong and you're actually, maybe not. All right, another reason I wish this was a pipe loom is because it's a little easier to get to the back. Right. Now I need some more of that gold, which is a mix of these three colors, which gives it that sort of baskety look. Um, it has a bright gold, but I didn't want it to be super, super bright, so I've toned it down with these other browns. Oh my gosh, yeah, Janet said uh, her son-in-law writes code and has two or three monitors at once. Um, I'm good with, I actually have two because I have the laptop next to the um, big monitor and yeah, let's see, I'm gonna need a fair amount of this, so. I'm using six strands of Weaver's Bazaar Fine um, at eight ends per inch, I could easily use uh, medium, except I have the most colors of the fine. I would use three strands of the medium. Oops, I messed that up. There should be six strands here, yep. Yeah. I'm gonna do a little splice. This particular yarn, if you take classes from me, you know that I really like splicing, but um, this Weaver's Bazaar yarn is gorgeous. It is also very tightly spun. It's a worsted spun yarn, and it um, doesn't have a lot of grip. There's not a lot of fuzziness to it. So even though I'm splicing it, I won't, I won't snip these splices off completely. It's just, in this case, it's sort of a way to help secure it um, as I'm weaving, maybe unnecessarily fussy. But if the results are good, I figure it's worth it. All right. Mm, I also am pretty sure this is in the wrong shed. Yeah, so I think I'm going to continue with just this butterfly. Oops. All right. All 
I'm gonna do a little eccentric thing here that is in the right shed. And I'm gonna put this one, do a pig, almost a pigtail, not quite. And then continue with this. Oh, that's not going to cover very well. So this is annoying, but that will get, um, that little tail will get stitched down. I could have done a better pigtail, but we're just going to go with it. Okay, so I did a little, um, I dropped that down eccentrically and I'm going to fill back in because of course we want tapestry mostly to be perpendicular. So I'm going to fill back in here and then when I get here, I'll be able to put in that outline that I need there. And that little blip will go away later. Well, welcome, Julie. I'm sorry you're awake in the middle of the night, but I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm probably boring enough to put you back to sleep, so might be a good thing. Um, Summer, that's a great question. Summer asked if the other bits of the basket were going to be shifts in color, and I did not even think about that until I was weaving the center thing, and I thought, oh, that's um, effective. So I do think that I will... I'm going to have to search out some other colors, but making this one just slightly darker, slightly darker, slightly darker, I think, um, so that the edge of it is sort of picked up as being lighter, I think is a good impulse. So thank you. Great question. Yes, I, I'm i going to shift it just a little, but with these Weaver's Bizarre colors, if I have um, slightly darker colors, I think I do. With all the colors that Weaver's Bizarre comes in, you can... Do that if you have them. This is a different way for me of working. Normally on my large pieces, I have it all planned out. I have all the colors planned out, everything. I mean, that's not to say I don't occasionally decide a color's wrong when I'm doing a big piece, but um, usually it's all planned out before I start. That great big tapestry cartoon right there over my shoulder. If you have a big monitor, you can probably see it. Um, is, is an example. I'm going to do it on a large loom and all of the colors will be planned out and dyed ahead of time. These are colors that I'm not dyeing. I'm buying them from Weaver's Bazaar. And um, I have a big collection of Weaver's Bazaar fine because I taught with it. So I bring it, I taught in the past. Um, in future, I assume I will also, but um, bring them to color and design courses for students to use. So I have a big bin of it. I have lots of colors, which I realize is not, a lot of people don't have access to that many colors. So anyway, it's odd for me to be, you know, most of the way through a piece and be thinking, oh, I'm going to change the color there. But that's pretty normal for probably most people. Part of that's just because I dye my own yarn and um, I do not like to stop a tapestry in the middle to go dye another color. I have done it, but oh, okay, so I think that's okay. Let's see, you probably can see better if I do this. No? I don't know which is easier to see. Kate, that's a good question. We had this conversation a lot in the um, design class. Kate's asking why slightly darker if lighter makes things look farther away. Um, 
I, I, that's my instinct is that I would make it um, slightly darker because I, it, my thinking is just that it's sort of tilted away from the viewer. It's not, the perspective in this drawing is not very good, but um, outside when we're looking farther away, things that are far away are light, lighter in value. But I'm not sure that that's always the case for something that is depicted as being very close up. Um, I might have to sh I might have to play with it a little bit, just to make sure that that instinct is correct, and I don't weave the whole thing and think, oh, that was bad. That's bad news. One way I might do that is just to um, pop this cartoon into. I often have a final cartoon in Photoshop. And I don't of this one, but it would be somewhat easy to do. Pop it in Photoshop and then just add some color really quickly to see which I like better. That's a great question. Marilyn wants to know why she can't get... Um, She says, why can I not use six strands of Weaver's Bazaar Fine at 80 PI? For me, it's just too tight. What, Marilyn, what warp are you weaving on? Is my first question. Because I think some people actually use eight strands of this at 80 PI. So what, tell me what warp, what, if, if you know what the size of your warp is. I mean, if it's cotton sand twine, if it's not, then I probably won't know, but. Um, probably Marilyn, it's a, um, you need to try bubbling more. There's not enough. I don't think it's, um, people often think it's a warp tension issue and almost never are problems, warp tension issues. I like a really tight warp tension, but, um, there are people like Joan Baxter. If you've ever had a workshop with her, her warp tension is so loose. It's like, yeah, I, I just couldn't believe it. I kept feeling her sample warp and being like, I can't believe you weave on this. So I, it's it's probably not warp tension. I do think it's easier with tighter tension, but I don't think the warp tension would have anything to do with how much weft. 12.6, um, okay, yeah, that's perfect. Um, and even a little bit thin. I don't know, Marilyn. I would try um, bubbling more if it's just not covering. Um, you said it's too tight, so I'm guessing you're getting lice. Um, you notice I am also twisting this, and I think that has a slight influence on things. It's a, okay, now I, what I'm doing here is checking the shed. So um, this shed is open from here down because I wanna put in an outline. I have to make sure my shed is right. Um, this is uh, open, that's open, open. No, I'm wrong. Okay, these two sides are in different sheds. So this is that same trick that I was doing with the brown when I thought I needed it, but I didn't. Um, I'm just shifting the shed by using this actual color. And now everything should be, yeah. So now that whole thing is in the same shed. I'm gonna leave this. I was gonna, <laughs> gonna cut this off um, until I do my little um, experiment that I was, uh, Kate has made me now think about to see whether I want this to get darker or lighter and stay tuned. I'm sure I'll put that on Instagram. So here I can put this, um, It gets licey, Marilyn says. Um, this coverage is um, pretty good, although I can see this yarn is a lot um, more firm than the Harrisville yarns. And so um, I'd say try bubbling a little bit more and beading a little bit more, but otherwise take one strand out. There's nothing wrong with, if it's getting lice and you don't like it, and everything else is looking good, for whatever reason, just take a strand of the weft out. Go to seven strands instead of eight, or six, sorry, five strands instead of six, and see if that is better. Um, 
yeah, this, um, I have various beaters here. Um, Jessica's asking about, this is, um, yes, this is a, one of the tiny beaters from Threads Through Time on Etsy, which I love. And um, another one I love is Magpie um, Woodworks. And this is their small beater, which you can tell I've used a lot because it's, um, the wood has gotten darker from, I think, oil on my hand. But I also use their larger ones. Magpie's great. Both of those companies are owned and run by um, amazing female woodworkers, so I recommend you support them. It's well worth paying 50, 60. Well, these little tiny guys are um, not $50, but the Magpie ones are more expensive and it's worth it for a tool that you're going to use all the time for the rest of your weaving career. They are handmade and they take a lot of time. Anyway, you didn't ask about that, but yes, I love, I love a good tool. This is way, I mean, so at the edge of what should be outlined eccentrically. It's really, um, this will be an experiment. I'm going to leave it in here and then I'm going to leave this part unwoven to remind myself. When I come back after I decide what color to do this, Kate, I will um, decide whether I only bring the outline down to here or whether it's going to work all the way. It just gets too steep and it, sometimes it will not look like, it'll look like floats instead of, and right here is the biggest problem right on the edge. It'll look like floats instead of woven in, but this is so textury, I think it might work. So, sure Marilyn, play with it and see what happens when you, and try beating a little bit harder too. Um, okay. So let me just back out. You can get a look at the whole thing again. Um, I almost have the words done. I was told there would be a hand basket. I have two more letters and a little, you probably can't even see that. There's a little butterfly right there. And uh, flames will go around this side. So hand basket. We are... Uh, Hoping 2021 will be better than 2020, right? We're not going to hell in a handbasket anymore. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Janet. So this is the question about Marilyn again. So twisting makes the weft round instead of flat, which is my experience. And it does have a different effect in terms of how it covers. So um, it also has a different effect in how it looks. So if you keep the strands untwisted, it will be a streakier effect if the colors are different and if you twist them they will blend more so that's another thing to play with Marilyn that's a great um, thought Janet and thank you Janet agreed how thick your weft is for your warp set is personal and it varies a lot it does vary a lot so don't take the fact that I'm using six strands at this particular set on a similar size warp to mean that that's what um, you need to use your loom and your materials and all of that vary. So you figure it out for yourself, which I'm sure you will, knowing you, Marilyn. Um, yeah, I agree, Janet. Um, a wider set at first because warps meander a lot. Weft tension. Um, Marilyn has enough experience, I think, to figure out what's going on, but it's a good question. Thanks, Marilyn. Um, so I like weaving and just would keep talking all day, but it is, um, time to go and you all can do your own, uh, weaving. I, I know I put the next dates on the website. I, whatever is two weeks from today, I'll be back in April and, um, I'm sure we'll have a whole new perspective on COVID in two weeks. Um. So happy to have spent some time with you all. Thank you for coming. And um, I am not going to make any predictions about what I'll be working on in two weeks. I um, really hope this piece is done, but uh, it seems like a long shot, given what else is on my plate in the next couple of weeks. So thank you for um, coming and for weaving. Keep weaving. And um, if you use Instagram, 
tag your um, whatever you're weaving with change the shed so we can see um, this hashtag that's up here in the corner um, so we can see what you're working on it's kind of fun to see what everybody else is weaving it doesn't have to be something you're weaving while you're watching just whatever you're weaving in terms of tapestry would be great anyway thanks for coming you all I will see you in two weeks um, <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You're always so positive. It's really fun to um, share some things with you. So I'll be back. And in the meantime, I'll see you on wherever we're weaving.